Undungeon is a game with a fantastical story, absolutely stunning art, and nail-biting combat. The developer, Laughing Machine, set out to bring their ideal game to life by mixing elements of old-school RPGs, action, and roguelikes together. While the game isn't what they originally envisioned when they sought funding on Kickstarter for their dream back in 2017, what is there feels inspired. Even the most successful crowdfunded game can fall short of promises once development starts, because the difficulties of development always surpass our greatest expectations. However, what differentiates the successes from the failures is the willingness to break promises made when it is right to do so. Undungeon is not the game that was promised back in 2017. It's better. The developers had to make choices the result of which is a game that hasn't left me so hopeful of an indie developer's future since 2011 when I played Bastion for the first time. The game isn't perfect, and it's not going to be for everyone, but the game outshines its flaws to be a unique experience worth remembering. This game is a story-heavy game, and in this review I'm going to limit spoilers to a minimum and only use footage from the first area of the game. Something I want to bring attention to, but only briefly because I believe it to be self-evident, is that the art is amazing. This game just looks breathtaking. When playing a game like this, graphics are usually something I don't even acknowledge as relevant to the conversation, but this game is just too stunning not to talk about. The use of pixel art helps show off enough of the world to get a vivid image, while leaving the actual details ambiguous enough to let the player's mind abstract what the world actually looks like. Giving us such exquisite art while not taking away our imaginations is nearly impossible, but they pulled it off in spades here. The example I'll use is the graphic glitches that happen when entering and exiting a map. Reality is unraveling, and showing that without looking incredibly stupid and gimmicky is difficult, and it's executed masterfully in Undungeon. One of the biggest issues I had with the game initially is its presentation of information. Like any new world with a deep history, new terms, places, and people can be overwhelming to take in all at once. The game doesn't do a great job of helping you understand what is happening initially, and if you're not careful, you can become completely lost only following the checkpoints, without caring about what they represent. This can be a major turnoff in the first few hours of the game. But while this can be frustrating as a player, I can't help but adore the story explanations behind it. You are the herald for the god of the void. A herald is a messenger created by a god to enforce their will on the mortal plane. They are revered as highly as gods by knowledgeable mortal. Your initial herald was created to collect other herald's emblems, and you are born several seconds after you start playing. So even though you are one of the second most powerful beings in this universe, you know little more than a newborn infant. You and your avatar are both synced in the reality that you know you have the weight of existence on your shoulders, but are woefully uneducated at what that existence even entails. You are revered as a demigod, so the people you talk to wouldn't dare assume they know more than you. Most of the things you talk about are common knowledge after all. So they think, of course the Herald knows what I'm talking about. But can you repeat? exactly what the peers and cores have to do with one another again? Ah. So, you've been amassing a trade empire for thousands of years in preparation for my birth? Well done. Just for laughs, though, could you tell me what exactly it is you sell again? You were one of the original beings to try and fight the gods for control over all the different dimensions? And you're here because you want to tell me about this... mirror? That's a bit suspicious, but damn if it isn't helpful. Thanks, dude. So, while I don't necessarily call the confusion you feel the strength, I was able to find in-game reasons and maybe even a little comedy in why the Herald would be so confused. This isn't to say that the story is not good. The premise is potent. Reality is failing. Alternate universes have been smashed together in a one after an event referred to as the shift, and all of existence is slowly returning to infinite nothingness. The only way to save everything is to combine the mass of different gods of the multiverse and use them to recreate reality. 
That is why you were born. Many different people are going to say something along the lines of, I am the last of my species. It may seem odd, but it hammers home that if you don't succeed, that's it for all of existence. You didn't pick up a game that puts you in the middle of some teenager's life when a sinister warlock took over a kingdom and now you need to stop him before he gets too powerful. Existence is already, and has been for a very long time, doomed. Not just one kingdom is on the brink, multiple worlds are breathing their last breaths. The best thing you can hope for is to start over again. At least, that's what you're told. There is an air of mystery that comes with all the confusion. What caused the shift in the first place? Will the other gods give up their mass to save all of existence? Why does your god even care? And more importantly, why do you? It's exciting and I enjoyed my time with it. Story and graphics are nice, but there is only one true king, and that is gameplay. The gameplay of this game is simple at a glance. There are two different actions you can take, either use an item or use a piece of equipment. There are three classes of items, a throwing knife, a grenade, and consumables. There are also three different kinds of equipment you can use. They all have a quick use and a charged use. The abilities the equipment gives you is dash, attack, and shield. So while you only have six different abilities to use, the possibilities are endless. There are dozens of different grenades and knives with different damages, debuffs, and hit patterns. Some attack weapons cost more stamina, but do more damage. Some do less damage, but are ranged. That's not where the customization ends either. You can create organs that give you several different buffs. And your base stats are augmented, not increased naturally. Your character has a core, and in their core, they have slots for runes that give them stats. You can work towards being a glass cannon or increase your armor to be a tank. Theoretically, you can mix and match equipment endlessly to try and suit your style. I say theoretically, because while customization is abundant, the game is extremely punishing. The enemies have all the same items as you, but they have a unique ability that you don't have. Whenever they inflict damage on you, their attack increases by 100% for a maximum bonus of 500%. So while getting hit once isn't cause for concern, if you don't learn to avoid attacks and quickly, you are dead before you even know what hit you. While I do really like the mechanic, I need to address it in full because I guarantee this is the biggest reason people won't finish the game. The level of difficulty starts off very low, but quickly devolves into infuriating levels of annoyance. I really like the idea of enemies getting stronger because you messed up and they hit you, but it's just too strong. The AIs are immaculate with their aim, so even standing far away where you don't think there are enemies will get you hit from off screen. And if you do go into melee and there's someone like a shotgunner, they can get 300% extra damage almost instantly. There are a few things they could do to fix this, like give the herald the same buff, but that might be difficult. Maybe hitting the enemies removes one of their buffs? It seems like once they get 500%, they keep that buff nearly forever. So at the very least, they could add a cooldown to how quickly the enemies can actually stack the buff. This buff isn't really an issue when you are fighting one or two enemies, because you can dodge pretty easily. However, as time goes on, enemies will retreat into their allies in order to heal. So you will constantly be fighting against three to five different enemies. With how punishing this mechanic is and how sporadic the attacks are when there are three or more enemies, these fights become infuriating in levels of difficulty. That isn't to say the game isn't fun. With great frustration comes great satisfaction. Winning these fights can feel really good. Coming up with new strategies to approach a certain pole, trading out your equipment or your items to switch up the buffs and attacks you have, changing your stat allocations to give you that slight edge over the enemy. They can all be really rewarding when it ends up working. But this game suffers from the most common issue high difficulty games suffer from. A group of enemies that has three or more mobs in it is significantly harder than any single unique enemy or boss. It ends up taking away from these unique fights. 
And for more careful people, it ends up devolving all trash poles to be ranged poles where you just attack and whittle down their HP. With time, you are going to master your different skills, and the fights will get easier, and combat will start to feel more fun and fluid. But I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to put this game down before they get that far. While I think this mechanic is difficult, I'm talking for the general public's perspective. This game is beautiful, interesting, and difficult. If that difficulty doesn't deter you, then you will definitely enjoy this game. I know I did. And if what I've explained so far sounds like a nightmare, I suggest waiting to see if the developers nerf that mechanic. And if you do play, just make sure you don't forget to visit Mirrors and Peers every chance you get. I don't care how good you are, don't you dare make just one more stop before you hit the mirror. I've lost hours of gameplay because, oh, just one more little area before I hit the mirror. No, for fuck's sake. 